Terry Barber is a best-selling author and founder of Lighthouse Catholic Media. Jesse Romero is a retired law enforcement officer, a former kickboxing champion with a master's degree in theology. And together, they share a passion for evangelization and PhDs in common sense. You're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. To join the show, call 888-526-2151. Here's Terry and Jesse. Today, our Lord Jesus Christ says in the gospel, in John chapter 8, I think this is the verse that basically is the point of departure for the Terry and Jesse show. He says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. That's in today's gospel. If you remain in my word and truly will be my disciples, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Today's gospel at Holy Mass. Uh, life is all about telling the truth and something that kind of shocks me. And it, but I guess it doesn't surprise me when, whenever Christianity is rejected, uh, you have oftentimes uh, the vacuum of secular humanism and false religions. There's one story that has me scratching my head. Yeah, me too. It says, Chinese engineer marries robot after failing to find a human wife. Is this microphone on? Hold on. Let me. Yeah, it's on. It's on. Okay. Now, there's a 31-year-old <laughs> engineer in China. Sick. Says he, I guess he could never find a girlfriend, and the guy's the guy's educated, and so what he did, he built a robot of a young woman, and uh, I guess this young robot has some kind of artificial intelligence, and he had a wedding ceremony with this female robot last year, and uh, a lot of people attended this ceremony. I don't know how he was married. He wore a black suit. the The robot had a, a red head scarf with a traditional Chinese wedding ritual. But here's the point, and by the way, it says here that um, the yeah the, the the person's mother and friends were there. Yep. Why would somebody make a robot and marry a robot? Here's my point, and I'll just turn it over to Terry. Here's what happens. Well, China is basically a Buddhist country, and Buddhism is a religion with no moral no moral boundaries. That's why many people are attracted to Buddhism. Because you can feel spiritual, but there are no obligations or moral demands. And so this is what happens to a country that embraces atheism or Buddhism. You have nonsense like this, people marrying their robots. I'll give you one more additional effect about that. China started uh, the one-child policy, okay? And, And in China culture, they wanted all boys, okay? So there were millions and millions of baby girls that were snuffed out through abortion. And they did that for decades. And so when the guys become a married age, right, they're going to want to go find a girl. Well, this guy's not going to find a girl because all the girls were murdered. That's my take on it. And again, Jesse, the bottom line is people act like animals without Christ. They, They do. And here's a good example. The guy's got a brain, right? And he says, well, wait a minute. What do I need a girl? I can manufacture one. And I can relieve myself. I can. Have, I, the arguments aren't going to be that strong. You see what the world is doing? It's living like God doesn't exist. And here at the Terry and Jesse Show, we want to show you the God moment. We need to evangelize China. And I've got to give you some good news. There's a lot of evangelists in China trying to do that right now because that's the biggest country by numbers by far of any other country. And there are people being evangelized, but a lot of work needs to be done. But why is it not being done in China? Just what we just said. They're acting like God doesn't exist. Uh, We have a special uh, topic we want to talk about, which a lot of people are curious. But we want to cover some of these other things first. But have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered, and we'll do this at, at, at the midpoint of the show. Have you ever wondered, why does exorcist, why does an exorcist ask a demon to reveal his name? Hmm. Have you ever wondered why, you've all watched movies in The Exorcism. Of course. For example, the movie The Right. Why is it that you'll see that an exorcist, with the permission of the bishop, has to ask a demon to reveal their name? You definitely want to stay tuned because we're going to share that at the bottom half of the show. Here's another thing that has me scratching my head. Okay? Yeah. The article called Lundistan, 423 new mosques, 500 closed churches. See, this is happening because of 
British multiculturalist. In other words, when when nothing's right or everything's right or you know everybody's included, when you reject Christianity, this fee, this opens a vacuum, and Muslims are coming in Islamic fundamentalism, and they're basically changing the UK, and we're seeing the gradual Islamization of the most important cities taking place right now in the UK. In fact, one of the leading British judges. Sir James Munby said that Christianity no longer influences the courts, and these must be, and the courts must be multicultural, which means more Islamic. Here's what Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, said, and the Chief Justice Lord Phillips suggested that English law should incorporate elements of Sharia law, and the British universities they're also advancing Islamic law. In fact. The academic guidelines in the universities basically say that external speakers in higher education institutions, okay, uh, provide that Orthodox religious groups. They're talking about they're talking about Muslims may separate men and women during events, and at the Queen Mary University of London, women have had to use a separate entrance and were forced to sit in a room without being able to ask questions or raise their hands, just like that happens in Tehran, Iran. Or in the Riyadh. Wow. And you know, Jesse, the Daily Mail published, and you can get this article on our website, catholicrc.org. The Daily Mail published photographs of a church and a mosque a few meters from each other in the heart of London. At the church of San Gargiolo, he designed it to accommodate 1,230 worshipers, only 12 people gathered to celebrate Mass. At another church at the Santa Maria, there were only 20. I got to tell you, I was in Lisbon, Spain. 28 years ago, in a big cathedral with my bride on our honeymoon, and I saw just that. I, there were only about 15 of us at a Sunday Mass in this huge church. And I'm wondering, where are all the Catholics? And they said they don't believe. And so here's my point. I see this, and I know this is not politically correct to say this, but I'm just going to say it. The reason Islam is also is, is growing in Europe, not just in London, is because the fires have gone out in Christianity, and they're afraid to even share the gospel with Muslims. And you see, people like Father Zachariah Mubutros, the Coptic priest from Egypt, he's a guy who's evangelizing all over the world because he's not afraid to evangelize. I'm going to say it right now, and it's not correct for me to say you know, politically, but again, our fires have gone out. Fulton Sheen said it, and he did it on his retreat, Renewal and Reconciliation, it's called the demonic today. And he talks about we're letting the devil run wild because we don't care. And if you haven't gone on retreat for a while, this is a three-day retreat with Fulton Sheen. You can get the CD on the demonic today, but get the whole re retreat. It's called Renewal and Reconciliation. He did it in the mid-1970s when, as you know, Pope Paul VI said, the smoke of Satan has entered the church. Am I trying to be an alarmist? No. You know what Jesse and I are? We're realists. We realize we're in a crisis. So I want you to get Bishop Sheen's CD on the demonic by calling 877-526-2151. Later, the second half, we're going to talk about the demonic. And I've got the spiritual warfare conferences we've done. We've got an interview with an exorcist DVD. I want you to be a high radioactive Catholic, informed, not one that says, I don't, I don't know that about that. You're gonna, you listen to the Terry and Jesse show and all the Immaculate Heart radio shows. Your high information of the Catholic faith will come. But I want you to pick up Fulton Sheen because he's at the top of the food chain when it comes to teaching you about the faith. A retreat by Sheen during this Lent or even the Easter season. Call 877-526-2151 or go online to catholicrc.org. Today's the feast day of St. Vincent Oh, great Ferrer. man. I could just imagine as he's looking down from heaven, looking at Europe and seeing the disaster in Europe. Uh, on this article that we have here, it says, by 2020, estimates are that the number of Muslims attending prayers at mosques will reach at least 683,000 people, uh, 683,000, yep, while facts. the number of Christians attending weekly mass will drop to 679,000. So in three more years... In the UK, in three more years, you're going to have more Muslims going to mosque on Fridays than Christians going to church on Sundays in three short years. These are just the facts. 
The reason is, uh, most people don't realize also, in 2015, uh, an, another study showed that the most common name in England is Muhammad. In 2015, the most common name in England is Muhammad. All I could say, St. Vincent Ferrer, pray for us. Who was St. Vincent Ferrer? He was an incredible saint. And you know what? I don't know if St. Vincent Ferrer would qualify to be speaking on interreligious dialogue, but I wish he would. Because you know what St. Vincent Ferrer did? And most people don't realize this. We need a St. Vincent Ferrer amongst the clergy. Amen. St. Vincent Ferrer, get this. Without the internet, without radio, without television, this priest converted 25,000 Jews to the Catholic faith in his lifetime. Now, some people may call this, Oh, St. Vincent, stop proselytizing. Naughty, naughty boy, cut that out. I disagree. That's not called proselytization. It's called evangelization. Amen. Here's another politically incorrect statistic. St. Vincent Ferrer converted 8,000 Muslims to the Catholic faith. Okay? And, a, and, and, and a, a, basically also, in his lifetime as a priest, he converted about 200,000 in between Muslims, Jews, heretics, and apostate Catholics, he brought them into the Catholic Church. St. Vincent Ferrer, pray for us. Amen. And if you'd like to get that care packet that we do for Fallen Away Catholics, the Catholic care package we send out, just call the 877-526-2151 number. When we come back, we'll continue to inspire you. We'll be right back. Back to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. We are blessed by the best. Hey, we got an email question. It says, uh, Dear Terry and Jesse, question. For all the people that go to purgatory, will they have the same amount of reward in heaven? Close quote. Well, that's a great question, but let's remember, heaven is not socialism and it's not communism. And it's not one of those places where, you know what, everybody gets a trophy, okay? Now, of course, everybody in heaven is going to be completely happy. But let me explain this to you. There are degrees of happiness in heaven, okay? There are degrees of happiness. God rewards us as he feels we deserve upon our entrance in heaven. I remember the analogy, and I think you'll remember this, a, a, a holy, a good holy fully habited nun shared this with me back in the 1970s and she used math to teach us about heaven she says i want you to understand that using this math analogy think about a cup think about a pint think about a quart think about a gallon all of them are unequal in size but when you fill all of them completely to the top they're completely full. They can't hold no more liquid. That's the same with our soul. Everybody in heaven will be happy, perfectly happy to their capacity. Based on their capacity, everybody will be rewarded according to how we loved and served God while on earth and how we open up our heart and soul to the capacity of receiving God's grace. Though some people open their heart and soul like a thimble. Some open it like a Dixie cup. Some open it like an eight ounce cup. Some open it like a pint, a quart, a gallon. But everybody's cup, so to speak, will be full in heaven. And so, for example, St. Mother Teresa, she's going to be rewarded to a greater degree than, than someone who made heaven possibly by a deathbed conversion. And of course, and rightfully so. Why? Because she opened her heart and soul to God in this lifetime to a larger capacity than most of us. But ever, however, though, in heaven, everybody's going to be happy to their capacity to hold happiness. Why? Because God is good and God is just and there's going to be no envy or jealousy in heaven. So each soul will be as happy as they can possibly be. Jess, I got to tell you, that was the best explanation that sister gave you. I had that same explanation given to me. But I don't know if our listeners, if you have never heard that before and you want to hear it again, 
Go to our website, catholicrc.org, or get our iPhone app and listen to today's show and share that with your kids because I think a lot of young people need to hear that at the early times in their life so that they have an understanding of our goal, going to heaven. Jess, let's talk about something that I get in a lot of trouble about, but that's okay. It's probably because of the way I part my hair, brother. And you know, here at the Terry and Jesse Show, we tell the truth, we make it matter, and we don't, we don't want to be boring. So we're going to talk about a topic that says, now notice the word I use, illegal immigration plummets after the Trump inauguration. I didn't say immigration. I said illegal. And so I want to make that point clear. And Jesse, I know that your parents came from Mexico legally. You wouldn't be here in this country if they didn't. And I'm just going to say this and I'm going to throw it back to you. Mr. Trump, President Trump is not doing anything different in the sense he's implementing the policies of our country. In other words, the stop sign that says really stop, he's saying you need to stop at the stop sign now and go through the process to be legally coming in. I think it's fantastic that we have immigration. As a matter of fact, Cesar Chavez, famous man, the farmer workers guy, his his comment, and I have I think it's in your book because I read it in your book, Jesse. He said that he's against illegal immigration. When I tell my friends that, they go, What? That can't be am I right or wrong on that fact, Jess? Yeah, most people don't know. And again, I hope people listen to what Terry and me are saying versus illegal immigration. Hence the word illegal. Okay. Most people don't know that Cesar Chavez was a longtime foe of illegal immigration. In fact, Cesar Chavez himself was a third generation American citizen and a Navy veteran. And although it's true that Cesar Chavez became over time, he became basically the 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 patron saint of the Reconquista movement to reclaim all the Southwest for Mexico. But when you read about him, Cesar Chavez in his prime, he was an ardent opponent of illegal immigration. And Cesar Chavez actively fought against the importation of strike breakers from Mexico. Cesar Chavez understood the basic laws of supply and demand. The greater the supply of labor, the less demand, and hence the lower the wages. Just as the founder of the American uh, Federation of Labor, Samuel Gompers, he was an influential voice calling for the immigration restricting laws of 1924. And just Cesar Chavez as well, he openly opposed illegal immigration because it crippled his ability to unionize farm workers and increase their wages. And in fact, here's what he said in his own words. This is 1979. He testified before Congress. Here's what Cesar Chavez said himself, quote, when the farm workers strike and their strike is successful, the employers go to Mexico and have unlimited, unrestricted use of illegal alien strike breakers to break the strike. And for over 30 years, the Immigration and Naturalization Service has looked the other way and assisted in the strike breaking. He says, I do not remember one single instance in 30 years where the Immigration Service has removed strike breakers. The employers use professional smugglers to recruit and transport human contraband across the Mexican border for the specific act of strike breaking, close quote. And most people also don't know that in 1969, Cesar Chavez actually led a march to the Mexican border protesting illegal immigration. He was accompanied by Senator Walter Mondale. And uh, also, uh, most people uh, uh, don't realize that this was his position up until the day he died. Jesse, I think what you just said shocked a lot of our listeners, because I don't know too many people who are aware of that. But I will say this, and that is, Cesar Chavez understood economics, okay, and family life. And he realized that if it wasn't legal immigration, illegal immigration was going to destroy the family in a number of ways, not just economic, but also for the safety of the family. Now, again, you might be upset that I'm telling you this, and that's okay. I'm happy to chat with you. You know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, thick skinned. I can't, I can handle it, but I'm just looking at the facts. It's just the facts. And I think sometimes we go to the emotion and forget about the facts. And that's why a lot of people are going, are you sure? I'm going to look that up, Cesar Chavez. He wasn't for, he had to be for illegal immigration. Come on. No, just the facts. Look it up. Again, before I throw it back to Jess, we're going to take another break in a minute here. But we're going to talk about something very, very important. And it's going to be dealing with the 
Well, the occult. Why do exorcists ask demons to reveal their names? It's an interview that's going to be fascinating for you. And we're going to do that at the break time. But I also want to ask you this question. How many of us have a friend or relative that's left the church? We talked about only 20, 25% of the Catholics going to Mass on Sunday. Well, we decided here at the Terry and Jesse show to put a Catholic care package together. And we put, you know, Mass DVDs, uh, CDs of Scott Hahn, Father Bill Casey, uh, Fulton Sheen. And it's a packet that will go to your relative, but not knowing that you sent it. You call 877-526-2151. And we'll send it to your friend a relative that's left the faith. And I hope and pray that they'll come back. Because I've had the experience of 39 years watching people who get a CD or a cassette over the years. And it changed their life. Because they don't have to defend themselves listening to the cassette. They don't want to hear it from mom or dad. But they will listen to a CD. Call 877-526-2151. And get your care packet. And just tell us where you want us to send it. In this uh, last two minutes, this article's pretty pretty inspirational, I think. Illegal immigration plummets after Trump inauguration. It says that the southwest border is down more than 60% uh, so far under President Trump. That's true. And and this uh, this is as a result of hiring uh, General Kelly, who's uh, he's a former he's a retired Marine Corps general. He's the one that's basically in in, in charge of homeland security. I think Terry's argument is one of the best arguments I've ever heard. I, I'm, a, I was, I'm a retired Los Angeles deputy sheriff. I can just imagine if there was no stop signs or red lights. There would be, there would be a car pile up in every single intersection. This is what the border is. It's a stop sign. And the, the way uh, streets operate safely is when people stop when it's red and they go when it's green. That's all the border is to the north and south of this country. All we're doing is asking people to stop so that we can see who you are because we don't want bad people from 18th Street, Mara Salvatrucha, the Mexican cartel, the, the Medellin cartel. We don't want felons, ex-convicts. We don't want uh, the people that are not going to bring anything to the plate in this country. In other words, if you're a criminal, stay in your own country. That's why we need stop signs. And guess what? This president, whether you like him or not, he's the first president I've ever seen in my life of 55 years that's ever enforced the stop sign. That's all he's doing. There's no new laws. All he's saying, hey, time out, okay? I know nobody's enforced this for 50 years. Everybody keeps running the red light and the stop sign. Not no more. Everybody's going to stop. We want to see who you are. You know, all I could say is uh, that's what a lot of people, that's why a lot of people uh, got behind him and voted him in. Yeah, Jess, I just want to, before we go to Mike in Yuma, Arizona, and we got Gus, several people, I just want you to know the next two segments, we're shifting gears, but we'll take your call. But it's going to be regarding the demonic and understanding what the devil can and can't do and why it's important to call him by name. And this is going to be so informative, you're not going to want to miss it. At the break time, call your relative or friend and tune into this show because the next 30 minutes, they're going to learn a lot about spiritual warfare and again, I've got the Spiritual Warfare Conference CDs here from Zachary King, Father Bob Guerin, and Jess Romero. If you want to get those, you can call 877-526-2151. And I've got an interview with an exorcist video that answers questions. Mom, Dad, we should be informed on the spiritual life, and the demonic is something we need to know. Call 877-526-2151 or go online to catholicrc.org. We come back, we're going to get Mike and Yuma. And we're going to talk about how to protect yourself from Satan. We'll be right back. This is Bishop David O'Connell, and you're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show at Immaculate Heart Radio. Back to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. We are blessed by the best. His name's Jesus Christ. Let's go to the phone lines. We got Mike calling from Yuma, Arizona. You're on, Mike. Yeah, Jesse. Uh, hi. I was just going to reaffirm what you said about uh, the uh, border when Cesar Chavez had the uh, crossing. I witnessed that firsthand, seeing him on the border with the men there stopping the illegals coming across. Hey, Mike, did we pay you to call? 
<laughs> I'm joking, Mike. It's Terry. All, Terry. I know, brother. No. I'm just, I think but by fact, my point is, I've had so many people tell me that can't be true, but you're an eyewitness to it. So thank you for making that call. I appreciate it. God bless yeah, you. Ma- thank you, Mike. You know, this is back in, again, 1969. Uh, Cesar Chavez, he actually led a march to the Mexican border protesting illegal immigration. And most people don't know that Cesar Chavez demanded that the federal government close the border. And he root- Cesar Chavez himself routinely reported suspected illegal immigrants to immigration officials. And he actually put his brother in charge of a Minutemen border patrol which on more than one occasion, they perform citizen's arrest. If you don't believe me, uh, just go to Google and type in this article. The article is called, uh, it's called Cesar Chavez, Longtime Foe of Illegal Immigration, written by Brian Fisher. If you want to see what we're saying, and you'll get just the facts. Let's go to Gus. Before, we got Gus yeah, before, Money. Before we go to Gus, I want everybody to know Mike and Yuma must be listening with our app, the Terry and Jesse app on your cell phone. You can get that by just typing in the Terry Jesse show, and you can hear our show anywhere in the world or go online to catholicrc.org. Gus and El Monte, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. What's on your mind, brother? Well, I just want to say that um, I know that Jesse is a, a very good expert on what I'm about to ask. Yep. I really think there's a demonic connection with marijuana use, and I kind of got into a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of a conversation with someone at work today, and, and they were saying, well, alcohol, you know, that, that's that's also a drug. And I was trying to, you know, educate it, but I, I kind of stumbled because I, I still haven't grasped that. I know this, this is kind of like a prelude of what you're going to be talking about next month at, the, at the talk, but how what would be the easiest way, mm-hmm. like, you know, answer that, sometimes yeah. we don't have that much time with somebody. Yeah. Got it. Yes? Well, here's what I would say just to make it very simple. Alcohol is permitted in the scriptures. It's permitted in moderation. That's the key word. Temperance in the Old and New Testament. Uh, drinking alcohol in a tempered manner, in a, moderate ma- in a moderate manner, is allowed. Although, you look at some of the scriptures, the prophets, many of the prophets took what's called a Nazarite vow, where they even abstained completely from alcohol because they felt a special calling from God as a prophet. However... You'll find no scripture in the Old and New Testament that allows for the use of drugs, okay? Alcohol is allowed through in Scripture, Old and New Testament, in moderation. Drugs is never allowed. In fact, the word drugs is condemned in the Bible. The word drugs is condemned. It's a Greek word, pharmakeia, which is usually translated in the Bible as sorcery or magic, those words in the New Testament, I can, I'm going to show people all the verses next, at the conference. Those verses, the actual, the actual Greek word, the etymological word is pharmakeia, which is where we get the word pharmaceutical or drugs. In English, we have uh, the translations aren't as uh, precise uh, to the actual Greek word. It translates them sorcery or, or magic. The fact of the matter is, Marijuana, even right now, under the federal government and even under the, the, the Obama administration, is a Schedule One drug, which means it's a dangerous drug. So once again, in the Bible, I'm arguing for the Bible. I'm not arguing from science here. The Bible permits alcohol in moderation. The Bible condemns drug usage, and the Greek word is pharmakeia. Gus, I know you're talking about the May 6th conference with Jess Romero on marijuana, the mind and moral conscience. That's happening here at the Sacred Heart Chapel. There are still room for people, if they want to register for that conference, you call 877-526-2151. Gus, thanks for your call. May God bless you and your family. Jess, let's get over to our, why do, uh, this is changing gears, everybody, but why do exorcists ask demons to reveal their names? This is on our website, but let's talk about that, the demonic. Yeah, the the article is, is an interview with an, the exorcist of Switzerland. Mm-hmm. His name's Father Caesar Truki. Father Caesar Truki. He's an exorcist of the Diocese of Chur, Switzerland. He was a speaker over at the Pontifical Athenas- a- a- Athenium Rome, uh, the, the, well, let me just say it in Latin, the Regina Apostolorum, okay? Uh, they had a course there on exorcism, and he was one of the presenters. And so he was asked a series of questions and let's go through some of them. 
One of the questions he was asked is, what kind of evil is confronted in an exorcism? Father Truki says this, evil personified. He says, not a simple uh, privation of good, as St. Thomas would teach in the Summa, as described by philosophy. He says, but rather an evil that is effective and operative. We're talking here about the presence of an evil being. Only faith and not science can tell us what this evil being is. And the Christian faith tells us of the existence of spiritual beings. The good ones are angels and the bad ones are demons. I like that answer because a lot of people think that when we talk about the devil or a demon, they think it's just kind of like a force or something in your mind or, or some folklore. He says, no, this is a being personified and you encounter them. He, he's encountered them many times, obviously. Terry? The great question I want to go to is why do you ask for demons' names? We hear it in the movies we've seen. Is it true? Yes. He said the ritual requires it for a specific purpose. Naming something or knowing its name means having power over the thing. In fact, God gives Adam the power to name things. At the instant that the demon reveals his name, it shows that he has been weakened. And if he doesn't say it, he's still strong. So that's the reason. And again, folks, Th- this I, is a very yeah, look, this is a very powerful critical. answer. Yeah, it I'll is. I'll tell you why. Yeah, tell us. Because, and and I I have shared with a lot of Catholics because I I've been involved in deliverance for over ten years, and oftentimes a lot of good cat lay, Catholic lay people. They bite off more than they can chew. I mean, they're, they're very good. They're very pious and devoted. They know their faith. And oftentimes, when I've helped other lay Catholics pray over a person, prayers of deliverance and supplication, I've seen some lay Catholics, they start asking the demon and ordering the demon to give their name. And I've pulled them aside. I'm saying, stop. You can't do that. Why, Jess? And again, this is... I'm glad this radio show is here so we can catechize people because there's a lot of good people out there that are doing deliverance and that God has called you to do that and pray for people that are, that are sick with some type of demonic affliction and you're out there doing God's work. But you can't, a lay person cannot name it, cannot ask a demon any questions and a lay person cannot order a demon by name or have the demon reveal themselves as through an interrogation. Who gave us those rules? If you want to know, the rules on healing and deliverance were written down by a person who's called Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger. There's a document he wrote about 20 years ago, and it's the do's and don'ts of healing and deliverance. In that document, he says lay people absolutely cannot address the demon and cannot ask the demon to reveal themselves. Only a priest can do that who's been given the authority of the bishop. Why? Not even a priest in a minor exorcism is allowed to do this because there's a minor and a major. Only a priest in a major exorcism can do this. Why? Because the, the priest in a major exorcism is now confronting the demon with the bishop's authority who's a successor of the apostles and with the bishop's authority that priest is now confronting the demon with the full authority of 2,000 years Amen. of Catholic Christianity and the church militant. So when a priest is commissioned, he's like the gladiator that's assigned to go, but he's got a whole stadium behind him to do battle. And only the priest commissioned by the bishop, a successor of the apostle, is allowed to order a demon to reveal his name because this weakens the demon and that's why exorcisms, major exorcisms, are much more powerful than anything else when it comes to praying against an evil spirit. We got more questions after our break. You're not going to want to miss this. And we're also giving away an interview with an exorcist, a DVD, for an hour long asking questions and answers on the demonic. And I have to say, Mom and Dad, this is important for all of us to have in our home. In other words, to know how to fight the demonic. And that's why we do these annual spiritual warfare conferences here at the Catholic Resource Center. We have three conferences that we've already got under our belt. If you want to get the recordings, whether it's an MP3 disc or the CDs, because I'll tell you, we had Zachary King. He was a former Satanist. We had Father Bob Guerin here. We had Jess Romero. All this is very important to fight Satan, especially when it comes to your home. And it's going to give you lots of good advice on what things you need in your home. Call 877 Five two six two one five one. That's eight seven seven 
526-2151 to get that. Or if you want to get Bishop Sheen's The Demonic Today audio CD, you can get his whole retreat. But if you want the CD, call 877-526-2151. This brings up another question we've been asked on the Terry and Jesse show. People have asked, hey, Terry, Jesse, can I name my guardian angel? Yeah, nope. Good question. Yep. The Catholic answer is this. No, you can't. Nope. Why? I'll tell you why. Because according to good Catholic philosophy, the higher, the higher can never be named by the lower. In other words, uh, angels are of a higher order than we are. And so we can't give them a name. It would be like animals are a lower order than human beings. It would be like an animal, like your dog giving you your name or your cat giving you your name. It doesn't work that way. Humans can name their animals because we're, we have a higher order of a higher species, but we can't give our guardian angel a name because they're of a higher species than we are. This is High Information Catholic Radio. Can you tell? You bet. We tell the truth. We make it matter, and we're never boring. If you want to get some good CDs on the demonic, call 877-526-2151. We'll be right back. This is Dr. Scott Hahn, and you are listening to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Thank you, Dr. Hahn, Blue Collar Catholic Radio. We're talking about, we got an article here of an exorcist who answer, answers a lot of details. His uh, name is Father Caesar Truki from Switzerland. But we started the program today talking about uh, a lot of churches that are closing in, in Europe, in in the UK, 500 churches have closed. They doesn't, they, it doesn't say just Catholic. I think Catholic and Protestant churches, right. both. Yeah, just Christian Methodist, churches yep, in general sure. have closed. Mm-hmm. And it says 423 new mosques have opened up in the UK as uh, churches have 500 Christian churches, both Catholic and Protestant, have closed. What I basically said, today's the feast of St. Vincent Ferrer. We need another St. Vincent Ferrer in Europe. St. Vincent Ferrer was an incredible preacher. No nonsense. We need a St. Vincent Ferrer right now doing uh, interreligious and ecumenical dialogue. Want me to tell you his qualifications? St. Vincent Ferrer's qualifications. Here they are. He lived from 1350 to 1419. Check this out. He prayed over 28 corpses and raised 28 people from the dead. <laughs> Amen. Okay? <laughs> Here's, here's something else he did. By a conservative estimate, he converted, without radio, without internet, without social media, without television, this priest in his preaching ministry converted around 200,000 souls. Amongst them at, were, were Muslims, Jews, heretics, and apostate Catholics. And he converted 200,000 of these souls back to the Catholic Church. In fact, in one single day, you know the way St. Peter in the Bible, he converted 3,000 people that became baptized. In one day, St. Vincent Ferrer converted 8,000 Muslims. In one day. Talk about power preaching with devil-destroying theology. St. Vincent Ferrer, pray for us. We need another St. Vincent Ferrer today. But I, you forgot one thing. He did all this without the Internet, and he didn't do it with the sword. He did it with the Bible. He did it with he did it with the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Amen. Okay, brother. let's go let's go back to the article, the interview with Father Caesar Truki. Yep. Uh, the exorcist from the Diocese of Chur, Switzerland. Here's another question. Are are there Father, are there typical signs of possession? He says, Yes. They're listed in the ritual. There are four. Number one. Aversion towards sacred things. Number two, speaking in unknown or dead languages. Number three, having extraordinary strength that goes beyond the person's nature. Number four, knowledge of concealed or hidden things. Terry? Yeah, next one. Can people put themselves in danger? Yes! That's why I want you to be informed. I want you to have this information. He says, by getting involved with anything that has to do with magic, you know, like the Ouija board, you know, the occult witchcraft. It helps us grow in sanctity when we go to Mass. Pray, go to confession, 
or draw near to God the same way. And here's the opposite. What do the what do they uh, Satanists do? They have black masses, satanic rites, movies, music of all kind have an effect on bringing us closer to the devil. See, I dealt with a case of a woman, he said, who began reading tarot cards as many do for fun. Except that in her case, she divined people's past and present and in some cases their future. She was telling that, right? And naturally, she was a great success. At a certain moment, she understood on whom her success depended, and she stopped doing it, but it was too late. She was possessed. You know what? I've heard that over and over again. People who have given themselves to the devil. I mean, just last month, we had our spiritual warfare conference with David Arias. He talked about something like this. Similar, if you want to get that spiritual warfare conference CDs, because this is informative. You want to know about this. Call 877 877- Five two six two one five one. This is a powerful article. Yeah. You can go to our website, catholicrc.org, to get the full interview. Terry and me have talked to a lot of ex-Satanists oh, yeah. that have given us the inner workings of that world. Yep. And each one of them has told us the same thing, that when you give yourself to Satan, he will give you some limited power. Yes, okay? of course. It's like candy. He gives you candy to draw you in, and you're able now, you start, you know, uh, divining, which means you become like a clairvoyant. You're, you you could tell people the past and the future. future. You have this hidden knowledge that, uh, you know, demons are giving you. You're, you're starting to tell people about their future with some accuracy. So all of a sudden, people are getting more and more hooked. They're saying, I like this power. I like this power. Then all of a sudden, bam, they become possessed. Or all of a sudden they hit rock, rock bottom and they go into a full depression. And so, yeah, the, you'll get candy for a little while. Satan will give you some candy, but at the end he demands your soul. Jesse, we just have, a, have a couple minutes. I want to give some practical information for our mom and dad. Because this last question talked about witchcraft and things that are in homes today. On a practical level, I can hear mom and dad going, hey, wait a minute, we've got a Ouija board in our house. Hey, wait a minute, my kid's playing this music that's, wait a minute. Jess, what recommendations are you going to give our listeners to prevent them from having demonic inf- infestation in their home? I'm going to be very practical. I know. St. Patrick of Ireland, who, by the way, was an exorcist back in the 4th century, he wrote an exorcism prayer against witches and warlocks and sorcerers. I would recommend that everybody listening to my voice right now go on the internet and type, type out St. Patrick's Breastplate Prayer. That prayer, written by St. Patrick, is an exorcism prayer against witches, warlocks, and sorcerers. Print out the prayer, St. Patrick's Breastplate Prayer, and try to pray that once a day as a family. It's, it's prayed for home protection. It was written 1,600 years ago by one of the greatest saints in the Catholic Church. And he wrote it specifically for the exorcism, the expulsion of witches, sorcerers, and witchcraft from your home. It's called St. Patrick's Breastplate Prayer. Print it out. Put it in your refrigerator and try to do it at least once a day with your wife and with your kids. Very powerful protection for your home. Well said, Jess. This is the practical side of the Terry and Jesse show, folks. We just got a couple minutes left. But, you know, if you want to hear this show again, just go to CatholicRC.org or go to JesseRomero.com. And again, if you want Jesse, I mean, he goes all over the country in English and Spanish. He's going to be here uh, you know, May 6, talking on the marijuana conference. But just this weekend, you're going to be uh, up at St. Mel's, aren't you? Say, I'm going to be this week in April 8th, uh, Saturday, uh, St. Mel's Catholic Church in Norco. Yeah. I'll be there from 8 to 12, giving some talks in English on spiritual warfare. And then from 1 to 4, I'll be giving the exact same talks in Spanish. And they're all for my book, Lord, Prepare My Hands for Battle, which has about... Ten chapters on spiritual warfare. Last thing I'm going to say, how is it possible to cure someone? Just as I could give someone the task of killing someone, I can ask a demon to do harm. But keep in mind, the great majority of rights realized by supposed witches or warlocks are fraudulent and without any effect. And so I want to just encourage you to pick up the Interview with an Exorcist DVD. If you don't have it, 
Father Tonio from Spain. He's a first class, uh, you know, first class exorcist. Wonderful interview. Or if you want the spiritual warfare conferences that we've had for the last three years, pick those up. But impor- most importantly, this is the week that's going to change the world coming up. I've got Dr. Ed Mazza coming on Friday. Tomorrow, Jess will be back. But I want to encourage you to go on retreat with Archbishop Sheen. This renewal and reconciliation, one of the talks is on the demonic today. This retreat will help you better better follow Christ. If you want to get it at a discounted price, call 877-526-2151. And if you'd like to have me come to your parish, just call that number, 877-526-2151. And I'm going to be at St. Dorothy's this Saturday with the, uh, a group there, and uh, love to share the gospel with you. My forte is how to share your faith with anyone. That's what I'd love to do at your parish. Just wrap it up. You know, most men work for degrees after their names. They're impressed with B.A., M.A., Ph.D. There's nothing wrong with that. But all of us, we should be working for, for, that, for those letters before our name. What degree is that? S.T., that's the degree we're working for. We want to have that ST before our name. You know, it's much more difficult. It's a much more difficult de- degree to attain because to get an ST before your name, it takes a lifetime and it takes God's grace. And guess what? You're not going to get your diploma until you're dead. But you know what? It's all going to be worth it. If I don't care if you're five years old or 105 years old, God from all eternity chose you to be where you're at right now at this time in history to change the world. So if you're breathing and you got two legs, you're called to be holy, you're called to pray, and you're called to evangelize. I'll just confirm that. Blessed Henry Newman said, God has created me to do him some definitive service. He has committed some work to me which he has not commissioned to anyone else. I have my mission. And I'll tell you one thing. If you have a relative or friend that's not practicing the faith, we started doing this wonderful care Catholic Catholic care package of CDs and DVDs, sending them to the folks that are not practicing anonymously. We do that for you. You just call 877-526-215. Why is it so effective? Because you're not the one trying to evangelize them. It's Scott Hahn. It's Fulton Sheen. Come on. This is the way we evangelize people to bring them back to the church. Be a link in the chain. Call 877-526-2151 to get your Catholic care package for your loved one. And I want to thank you all for your support here at the Terry and Jesse Show. We are so blessed to be with you every day here at Immaculate Heart Radio. We consider you our family, our spiritual family. May God bless you. And Jess, what state should our listeners be in? You know what? There's 50 states in this country, as you all know. Doesn't matter what state you live in, but I'll tell you what state you definitely want to live in. It's called the state of grace. You can't find it in the map. You can only receive the state of grace by following Jesus Christ in the Catholic Church. There's one state you don't want to live in. That's the state of mortal sin. Stay away from it. Talk to you soon. We'll talk to you again at the same time, same station. Don't hesitate to call us, 877-526-2151. God love you.